Hello there, men, and welcome to the Masculinism Movement channel, a place for men to be men and talk about masculinity and men's issues. I'm your host, Brian Crawl, and today I'm going to be talking to you about sexual protection and how to practice safe sex so that you can be protected from STDs and unwanted pregnancies and such. Because as I talked about in the last video, men's seed is sacred and we shouldn't be just giving it away, especially because women have far more reproductive rights as I just outlined. They have not only far more methods of birth control, but they have the legal ability to commit paternity fraud any way they want to and even get away with it. This could be telling the man that she's on a form of birth control when she's not, or poking a hole in his condom, or fishing it out of the garbage and extracting the semen, or getting pregnant by someone else and claiming it is his. And men do not have enough reproductive rights to protect ourselves from these things once they have already happened. A man's reproductive rights end once sex begins. A man's reproductive rights end when sex begins. They are limited to your choice of either using contraception or not and having sex or not. Once you are having sex, you know, the choice is set in stone, basically. All right. And even then, you know, you could have had sex with a condom and not even ejaculated, you know, and she could uh, steal another man's semen and, uh, you know, get pregnant and blame it on you and get away with it. And you could still end up paying or she could steal your semen and entrap you in a pregnancy uh, that, you know, wasn't something you consented to. You, you wore a condom, you ejaculated in the condom and you put it in the garbage and she took it out and took it home with her and, you know, inserted it up there and got herself pregnant. And yet you are still the one liable for making that semen available to her in the garbage. So how do we use contraception to protect ourselves from any of these scenarios? Well, here is a short definitive list of how you can stay safe while being sexually active. The first and foremost is, of course, practicing abstinence, at least in some form, okay, which would protect you from any potential pregnancies or STDs whatsoever. So that means if you want to have your penis come into contact with a girl, keep it away from her vagina, right? Stick with blowjobs. Or better yet, you know, you could be celibate from sexual interactions with women, right? And that just means you have to abstain from female contact. And there's plenty of other ways to fulfill your sexual needs that can actually be even more pleasurable than that. All right, I've always found that when it comes to you know my leisure time that using porn is more relaxing than sex now i'm an athlete so when i'm done with a hard day of training i just want to relax okay and sex for men is work women don't do most of the work in sex they make the men do most of the work so i've always found that after a hard day of training i actually enjoy jerking off to porn a lot more because of how much more relaxing it is and it gives you the ability to channel surf through a wide array of different videos or pictures of different types of hot women not only do you get to see all the hottest women on the planet but you know women from every country and demographic every body type and such and all the different types of sex acts you could possibly imagine some of which you couldn't even possibly do in real life you know like there's cartoon porn and fantasy porn and shit like that uh you know so there is just so much more at your fingertips when you are using porn. And using point of view porn, my favorite way to shoot porn, as I'm a pornographer myself, uh, and using VR goggles can make it seem perfectly real. So it is actually a very legitimate replacement for sex and the way that your brain is going to perceive it and interpret it. You know, if you're using POV porn, especially with VR goggles, it seems to your brain like you are actually, you know, in that scenario yourself and experiencing it firsthand. And then using an artificial vagina on top of that is going to be at least as pleasurable as the real thing, if not more, which is exactly what they are made for. Real vaginas are actually much less pleasurable than artificial ones, which, you know, their interior is made to sort of massage the penis in a way it, is never going to experience outside of that specific mechanism that was made for that. And there's different ones that have, you know, different interiors, um, you know, so you can look at their interiors and uh, how they're designed before buying them. And you can buy different ones. They have different, 
inside so you can feel different each time. And then of course there are also lifelike dolls and robots that are getting more and more human-like every year. If you want a replacement for a female body, they can even replace female companionship and uh, they're going to be very advanced and affordable in no time. So practicing abstinence is actually more sexually fulfilling <laughs> than it ever has been. You don't have to become a monk, okay? You can be getting your rocks off and actually be experiencing probably more sexual satisfaction than you ever would. You know, for instance, I remember one time I got out of a relationship and took a break from women entirely. So I got myself a couple of artificial vaginas. I got accustomed to them for a few months. And then when I became sexually active with women again and went back to the real thing, it was like very difficult for me to even keep it up while fucking because the vagina itself felt like next to nothing compared to the way those artificial vaginas were made. And so the vagina was so much less sensual, sex was less satisfying, orgasms were less intense, and you know I had to basically stop using the artificial vaginas entirely in order to be able to have a healthy sex life because the female vagina is just not that impressive compared to this technology that we have that is made to be so much better than that. And of course, no woman is ever going to be able to pleasure you as good as you're going to be able to do for yourself because only you can feel what you are feeling and know exactly how to make it feel the best for you. All right, and most women are very unskilled sexually and uh, you know uneducated and a lot of them put in very little effort. They're just not good at pleasing a man. Unless you do number two, which is if you must have sex with a female woman, I highly recommend that you do so by hiring a professional sex worker to take care of your sexual needs. She will be so much more skilled at sex than the average woman. The cost will be upfront and the experience will be catered to fulfilling your desires. Uh, unlike a normal girl, you know, she won't get herself pregnant and try to use you for your money except for that one single transaction. However, unfortunately, sex workers are illegal in most places, but what is legal in most places is making pornography. And that is actually even safer. This way you actually have a contract between the two of you stating exactly what you are going to be doing together, as well as video evidence of the entire encounter showing that that is exactly what you did together. And even better yet, though you have to pay for it up front, like if you were hiring a prostitute, you can then turn around and sell it and make passive income off of it for the rest of your life. So this is not only the safest, but also what I consider in my professional opinion to be the most beneficial way to have sex which is exactly why I became a pornographer. And if you would like to learn how to do these things yourself, just shoot me an email at the link below. But then number three, always use a condom when having sex should be your rule of thumb. You should never have any exceptions to that rule. That is really stupid. You know, that's all risk and no reward. And make sure you use good condoms too, not cheap ones that, you know, might possibly break on you. And don't use condoms that are old either check the expiration date and make sure you keep your condoms in a cool dark place all right a condom that overheats has been compromised and is prone to breaking so they need to be in your nightstand drawer uh under the couch or you know something like that but not in your wallet okay you can keep them in a suit coat pocket that is not going to be uh you know on your body like this one is so don't keep them in your suit pocket unless you're going to wear your suit pocket open okay they cannot be against your body like that or they will deteriorate over a short period of time and during the sex act when you are using the condom make sure it stays in your possession at all times and then once you have ejaculated into it it is your job to make sure that semen remains secure all right, so you can either take it off, turn it inside out over the uh, toilet and flush the semen. You could certainly put it in a garbage can, but you need to make sure that she's not going to be able to get at it. All right, so if you want, you can take some other preventative measures like Drake uh, put hot sauce all over his condoms so that when a woman tried to use it, she got burned, which is exactly what happened. You know, even though he put it in the garbage with hot sauce in it, she still used it so you know keep in mind that these are things that women do and you really do need to take care of it well if you want to protect your seed and genetic material all right so hide it or flush it make it so that she cannot extract the semen or better yet number four get a vasectomy now if you do get a vasectomy i still recommend using a condom to prevent stds i myself have gotten two <laughs> even though i do use condoms for the most part 
Uh, that has not always been the case, and uh, you know th there are dirty women out there, and sometimes condoms aren't even enough for certain STDs. Um, but you know you need to protect yourself as much as you can from them. And the way to stay safest while having sex is to get both a vasectomy and still use a condom. And then if a woman fakes a pregnancy or commits paternity fraud, <laughs> you have the very best defense that it is impossible for you to have kids. So getting your tubes tied, uh, you know may not sound like a great idea you know the thought of it might make you queasy it may sound emasculating even but it is actually very freeing <laughs> you now get to have the safest sex possible and have absolutely no risk of unwanted pregnancies whatsoever but whatever you do just make sure you are staying safe one way or another momentary pleasure is not worth having to pay 18 years of child support to raise a basically you know unwanted child with a woman who you didn't want to be a co-parent with and may not even get along with and this may very well ruin your golden years as it did with me unfortunately so do not let your sexual instincts get the better of you think with your big head when it comes to contraception make sure the woman can never get a hold of your seed now I know some of you men out there may want kids but at the same time you, know, you don't want to be taken advantage of by a woman financially and you especially don't want to have kids with a woman you know only to have those kids taken away from you you know while also being taken advantage of financially but luckily men do not even need a woman to have kids all right you can actually have a test tube baby with your sperm alone without the need for a female surrogate so that's something i'm going to be talking about again in one of the next videos but that actually concludes this talk i hope i may explain that well enough for you guys out there thank you for listening be sure to share your own thoughts and opinions on how you protect yourself and stay safe when having sex by commenting below and if you like this video be sure to hit the like button and share these messages with everyone by sharing the video on social media and talking about these things too and lastly check out the links in the description below for other resources for your masculine personal development and living the life you want to as an independent man and if you can afford to donate please do so with the paypal link below because your support funds me doing this work and fighting the good fight for men like you and you can stay tuned for the next video coming out soon which will be on our 100th video update. This was actually technically the 100th video. So we are going to be celebrating that in the next one and just talking about, uh, you know, things that have transpired and things to come. And make sure you're subscribed so you'll be notified when that comes out. And until then, take care of yourselves, men. There's no woman out there is going to.